So our next unit in Honors Anatomy is going to cover all the different tissue types that we will continue to refer back to throughout the academic year. Um, there's only going to be two videos, but they're going to be pretty content heavy. And the first one that we're going to focus on today is tissue.1 epithelial tissues. So for this standard, it says I can describe the structure, function, and characteristics of different types of epithelial tissue. And this content comes from section 5.2 of your anatomy textbook. All right, so in your notes, a brand new, fresh, clean page, please put unit two tissues at the top. Now, when we're embryos uh, and we're developing, we have a ton of stem cells, and that means that they're cells that can differentiate into many different other types, muscle, fat, bone, blood, nerve, etc. And so we got to put some definitions down first. What are we talking about when we say tissues? So a tissue is just a clump of similar cells that share a common function. So this uh, little clump of four muscle cells, that would be a muscle tissue. When we're studying them, like we're going to do in lab, the um, study of tissues is referred to as histology. And there's a lot of people who do this for their career where they're sent slides of particular human cells, uh, often if we're looking, at, uh, looking for disease, rather, and we're screening the cells to see if there's anything abnormal or irregular. Um, so we're going to use microscopes a lot in this particular unit. There are four major classifications of tissues. Epithelial, which we'll cover today, connective, which we'll cover in the next unit, or in the next video rather, and then muscle and nerve are unique, but they have their own units dedicated to them. So we're really only going to talk about epithelial and connective in the tissues unit. Okay, your subheading should say tissue one epithelial tissues. So what is an epithelial tissue? Well, epi means above, on top of, or around, and so this is tissue that you can find covering your organs and body surfaces, lining all of your body cavities, any hollow organs that you have, and um, also making up your glands. They have a free surface on the outside and a basement membrane anchoring them on the inside. So there's the way you can find epithelial tissue is by looking for open space because they're going to be found lining that open space. Epithelial tissues divide really quickly and that helps heal the injuries they might sustain since they are on the outside of organs or of your body in general. The epithelial cells we'll look at are all very tightly packed like bricks depending on their shape, uh, but they are classified according to shape and number of layers. So of all the types we're going to mention specifically what shape are the cell and how many cells are there in a layer. There are three distinct shapes we're going to mention. Squamous means flat, cuboidal obviously means cube-like, and columnar means tall. So anything we talk about will fit into those three categories. And then for layers, we can either have simple tissue, which is just one layer of cells, absolutely microscopic, stratified tissue, which is two or more layers, and then one type of pseudo-stratified tissue. Pseudo means fake, so these are cells that look like they're layered, but really it is just one layer, and we'll see that example soon. All right, new subheading, types of epithelial tissue. I believe there are nine, if you'd like to number them. When you're entering these into your notes, I recommend sketching the cartoon picture. I wouldn't draw the microscopic image, but I would sketch what you could see under the microscope or what you would see in your textbook right here. Um, so that you have an idea of what that tissue looks like when it's shown to you. Okay, simple squamous. Simple means one, and squamous means flat. So this is a single layer of thin, flat cells. So really, really, really thin and narrow then. This is good because substances like ox oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, can pass through really easily. So thin cells are good for passage. They are delicate though and can very easily be damaged. They're found any place where we want to diffuse things or filtrate things. So places where we're taking in air, places where we're passing water or substances across a membrane, that's where you'll find these tissues. So examples would be lining the air sacs of your lungs, which are known as alveoli, or in your really tiny capillaries, the smallest blood vessel in your body where the gas exchange actually occurs. Those are two places you will see simple squamous tissue. You will also see them, of course, in lymphatic vessels and other blood vessels, but really I would focus on the capillaries. 
Another type of simple tissue is we can have simple cuboidal. So we can see one layer of cube-like cells. When you're looking at these microscopic images, I just want to make sure you're aware that the dark circle in the center is the nucleus, and the cell shape itself is a cube. So just like in the cartoon picture here, the dark circles are not cells, those are nuclei. And they're very easily lined up in a simple cuboidal. So a single layer of cube-shaped cells, uh, these are really common in glands because they help secrete and absorb things. Um, and specifically in the human body, we tend to see simple cuboidal in our kidneys and in women's ovaries. They also can line the ducts of some specific glands, again, for that secretion function. Our last simple layer would be simple columnar, so a single layer of elongated cells. You can usually see the nuclei pretty even at one level, and that's going to be down near the basement membrane. So this would be the free surface of the cell. This is out to the outside world. And then this is that basement membrane. It anchors the cells down, and the nuclei are usually sort of lined up close to that. Sometimes these cells have cilia, or microvilli, which look like little hair-like projections. And these increase the surface area of the cells and help with movement. And so we can find these cells in uh, places where we secrete and absorb, specifically your stomach and your intestines. So when I see simple columnar cells, I see digestive system because these little fingers will move food along, will absorb micronutrients, um, and you can also find them lining in the uterus to help move the egg along its path um, through the fallopian tubes down into the uterus uh, and eventually being shed out. Pseudostratified columnar, our only pseudostratified example, are a single layer of long cells, again with microvilli or cilia at the top, but the nuclei are uneven, making it look like there might be two layers of cells there, when really it's just the cells are abnormally shaped and they are just in one basic layer. So in our micros microscopic images, we see very even nuclei for simple columnar, and then we see very uneven nuclei for pseudostratified. So it's a single layer, um, nuclei at multiple levels. Often we see those cilia, and most of the time these protect from infection, and so we'll find them lining the respiratory passageways where these little cilia reach out and filter the things we're breathing so that we can take in pure air and we don't have to take in the dead skin cells or the dust that's floating around us. Okay. Now we're getting to stratified tissue, so more than one cell layer. So we have one for every shape. Stratified squamous is many cell layers uh, of squamous, squ squamous flat tissue. Um, and this tissue is extremely protective. Because we have all those layers, we can take some damage here, we can lose some layers, and still not get down to the basement membrane. So uh, it helps keep whatever tissue is underneath it safe. The outermost cells in stratified squamous, you'll notice, are that flat shape. Down near the basement membrane, they look almost cuboidal. So if you're looking at tissues and you're trying to identify what shape it is, look towards the outside free surface, not towards the basement membrane, because they do change as they migrate outward. Um, in these stacks of cells, the oldest cells are out here at the top and the youngest, newest cells are near the basement membrane. So as they migrate out, they get older, and eventually they flatten out and die. You'll find these cells uh, lining your oral cavity, the vagina, the anal cavity, um, and also even in your skin, your integument, you'll find this tissue type. Any place where you could have contact that's abrasive with the outside world, like every time we eat, we're having food scrape against our mouth and some cells come off, so we want to have many cell layers there as protection. Stratified cuboidal is much less common. We have only about two to three layers of cube-shaped cells. They're a little bit more protective than a one layer, but have very similar function in terms of secretion and absorption. We find these in mammary glands, sweat glands, salivary glands, and in regions of our pancreas. Stratified columnar, even less common. I don't think we even have a slide of this in the lab, but uh, the top layer of these cells look a little bit elongated. It's the only thing that differentiates it from stratified cuboidal. We have cube-shaped cells in those deep layers, and we really only find these in parts of the male urethra. 
The other type of epithelium that doesn't have a layer or shape name is transitional. So if you see a tissue sample that seems like, okay, I see cuboidal up here, it looks like pseudo-stratified, I don't know. These don't really have a regular shape. Um, these are transitional cells, they're transitional epithelium. Many cell layers, uh, many cell shapes, and uh, the point of this tissue type is it's really good at stretching. So this thing lines, this type of tissue lines your bladder, uh, lines parts of your urethra so that your bladder can inflate when it fills with urine and then deflate as you urinate. Some review here, the cells are in blue. We have a single layer of flat cells, so this would be simple squamous. We have a single layer of square-shaped cells, so this would be simple cuboidal. We have a single layer of elongated cells, and I would say those nuclei look kind of irregular to me. So I might say these are pseudostratified um, columnar epithelium. Here we have many layered cells. So I don't want to look down at the basement membrane. I want to look towards the outside. So towards the outside here, these cells are flat, which means that this is stratified squamous. On the outside here, these cells look maybe cuboidal, maybe columnar. I would accept multiple answers for some of these. I believe this tissue type is stratified cuboidal because this tissue type has very long cells at the end. That would be stratified columnar. The way I know it's stratified is because I see multiple layers of nuclei stacked on top of each other. So I know this is at least two layers. This here must be our real pseudostratified because now we see these long cilia, which seems to be a clue for pseudostratified columnar. Um, and we see these really funky cell shapes, and then this other picture here would be transitional. So I can't really find a common shape, they're all kind of clumped together. That would be our transitional epithelium. The only other thing we have to mention in this standard, besides those epithelial tissue types, uh, is glandular epithelium. So these are cells that produce or secrete substances either into openings or into other body fluids. There's two main types of glands. Endocrine glands secrete things, uh, secrete like hormones or substances into tissue fluid like lymph or blood. And exocrine glands secrete into ducts that open onto the outside surface. So that would be like your sweat, your tears, uh, mammary glands for milk, any of those would be exocrine. There are two structural types of exocrine glands. You can have a unicellular gland composed of one cell uh, these would be like a goblet cell where you just have one little cell that secretes mucus or it could be multicellular where we have all these cells working together to secrete a lot more substance so sweat saliva etc i would draw this picture in your notes here on the right where we have different shapes of glands as well as if they're simple or um, branched or even compound we have different complexities of glands we can also classify glands based on how they secrete. So we have three pictures here. We have a merocrine gland, an apocrine gland, and a holocrine gland. I encourage you to pause the video for a minute and look at the picture and see what are the differences. Hopefully you've noticed in picture A for the merocrine gland, we have a secretion that's being pushed out through what looks like exocytosis, just a cellular secretion, but ultimately the cells are remaining intact. And then as we move down the list, we have a piece of cell that has been chunked off and is put into the secretion. Oh, and then at the end, for holocrine, we have an entire cell that's being pushed off out into the secretion. And that is the difference we're looking for. Merocrine glands just produce a substance like saliva or sweat. Aprocrine glands break off cell chunks, which happens in our mammary glands like milk. And then holocrine glands push out entire cells our oil glands, known as sebaceous glands, do this. So that covers all the different types of epithelial cells that you could see um, in the lab when we're looking at the microscope. And I know there's a lot of different classifications. It takes some time. So I encourage you to look at different images of cell types and practice identifying by shape, by layer, uh, and also the types of glandular secretion.